Country Craft Corner and Arlen's Travels. How in the world are you guys doing today? I hope this video comes to you and you are feeling okay because I know pretty much in the United States, pretty much around the world, we are all kind of in lockdown because of this COVID-19 virus. And so I wanted to bring you a little something today that hopefully will brighten your day a little bit. Uh, in that, I will go through our little itinerary that we did on our last cruise, but I'm going to back up first and say on this cruise that I'm fixing to tell you about, it, it was a little bit of an anxious time for Chris and myself, and I will get into that and I will explain as I go because of COVID-19, you know? So let me back up though first and say thank you guys for all of your comments and your sweet words on my Country Craft Corner and on my Travels channel, on both of my channels. I appreciate those of you over on my Country Craft Corner channel taking a peek at those videos and seeing a little different side to me. And I encourage you over there on my travel channels, if you're interested in any decorating or uh, crafting that I do a lot more of than traveling, you're welcome to come over and join me on my Arlen's Country Craft Corner channel. One of these days I'm gonna stop cross posting, you guys. Uh, because it's just, it's a lot for me to do the cross posting, you know, so I think probably maybe moving forward that, you know, after I get all these videos in the can for this cruise, moving forward that my, my, my travel videos will just go up on my travel page. But anyway, <laughs> so let me back up here and we're going to move to the uh, place and time where we just finished our New Zealand cruise and we traveled back home, which is where my last video ended, other than my cruise outfit of the day video. But my last vlog video uh, was us coming back to LA on the plane and landing there at LAX. And I'm telling you, LAX, I'm pretty impressed with LAX. You know, I've heard good things and bad things about LAX, and half the time I think it's however you approach things in life, where you bring up the negative with your negative attitude, or you bring out the positive with your positive attitude, you know? I really think that's true sometimes, and I don't mean to say that about anything or anybody. I'm just saying that about myself. If I go into a situation and I have a positive attitude about it, that situation's gonna become a better situation, you know? But anyway, we landed in LAX uh, and, and we headed to the rental car company and rented ourselves a car. And for those of you familiar with LAX, you had to go to a rounder out there and go and wait there for the enterprise. We had a call enterprise say, we're here, you know, and they picked us up. And, or we drove on around to the Enterprise place, which was far away from, not far away, too far to walk with suitcases away from the airport. So we pulled into the Enterprise rental place and they got us, uh, we had a, oh land, I don't even know what kind of car. It was a full size sedan car. I think it was a Ford something. I don't remember. Uh, so we headed out to Moreno Valley and we went out to Moreno Valley uh, because, and we stayed out in a Holiday Inn Express out there. We were going to be in LA for four days because our friends Barbara and Dawn live in Moreno Valley and said that why don't, since we're going to be in LA for four days between cruises, see we had done the three day Sydney cruise and then we did the 13 day New Zealand cruise and then we flew back to LA and we had four days between the New Zealand cruise and our next cruise, which was going to be a 15 day ocean to ocean, full transit Panama Canal cruise. Now, let me back up too here and say that Chris planned this whole thing. Now, of course I have a travel agent. Her name is Pam <laughs> that you saw in my other video there. And she of course uh, got all of the cruises taken care of for me, for us. Uh, she booked them all and she got them all, you know, in shape for us. Uh, but Chris did everything else. He procured all the hotels. He procured all the rental cars. We had three rental cars and three ho three hotels uh, in with this six-week journey, almost six weeks. It was like 40, 45 days, something like that. It was a long time. We were away from home for a long, long time. And I think it was too long. It was a little bit too long. 
That said, because of COVID-19, it seemed much longer. If we did not have that component put into our vacation, we might have been just fine being away because we don't have any more dogs, as you know. Our kids are grown, and there's, you know, there's nothing pulling us back here, so to speak, like a dog would be, you know, in our home. So, uh, but anyway, so we stayed in Moreno Valley uh, for four days. We did some things with Barb and Dawn. They took us out to uh, Palm Springs. Oh my goodness, what a lovely drive that was. We saw all kinds of windmills and beautiful scenery. Here we are uh, in our rental car. That's Chris driving. That's the back of Chris's head, and this is the back of Dawn's head. And here's Barbara here beside me. Hi. And we are coming into Palm Springs, California. Y'all believe this? I am actually seeing Palm Springs, California. This is in the mountains in this area, y'all. Look at this. They are superb, absolutely gorgeous. Look at that out the front window absolutely gorgeous i am so excited to be seeing this this is something i've never seen before a place oh, wow, i've never there's been a ups truck oh look <laughs> ups <laughs> sorry that's all right but it i mean it you know and barb and don are actually going to come visit us out in virginia uh in august and we're going to be able to take them around but we don't have a palm springs i'll tell you that we do have other things though but anyway look at all the pretty palm trees and we're gonna go to lunch here in a little bit, but thought I would just come on and say, how cool is this? We are in Palm Adobe. Springs, California. Yeah, Beautiful scenery, and we went to Elmer's <laughs> over there in Palm Springs. Oh my goodness, they have this big fat, uh, what is it, a potato pancake, I think, or I can't remember what it's called, it's there on the menu. Oh my goodness, it took up a whole plate. I got a Reuben myself, but Chris and Barb both had one of these pancakes. It was amazing. Such good food. Such good food, you know. So we had a big time staying in there, you know, staying there with Barb and Dawn and hanging out with them. And we went to dinner with them every day. And we just had, you know, times that we just sat and chit-chatted. And Barb did my hair. Bless her heart. She colored my hair. She's a hairdresser. Thank you so much, Barbara, for coloring my hair. My hairdresser had given her my formula. <laughs> so Barb just went in and did my did my roots and then we got our nails done another day there's my nails they're growing out right now I need to get them done I don't know how I'm gonna do that because we're uh, practicing uh, 14 days of self quarantine here since we were on a cruise and did fly home so so anyway so we spent four days with Barb and Dawn and had a lovely lovely time and then we left Merino Valley on a Friday morning because our cruise started Saturday and we went back to uh, San Pedro, California and we ended up staying in a uh, Crown Plaza for one night. Holiday Inn Express was very nice, you guys. The Crown Plaza, I wasn't that thrilled with this Crown Plaza. Uh, I mean, tell you, it was right there at the port. Uh, I got some pictures, I think, of it that I'll put up here. Uh, it, it wasn't that wonderful. I felt like our room was going kind of downhill. It was a big room. Don't get me wrong. It was a big room, you know, and a beautiful view, beautiful view of the port, you know. But I was like, well, uh, you know, it was all right. For the money we paid, it wasn't that wonderful. So just being honest, just being honest and straightforward with y'all. <laughs> but anyway, it was good enough, of course, for one night. So we stayed there for one night. The next morning we get up, what is the first thing I hear from one of my friends who was on the Emerald Princess, which is the ship. We had done the Ruby, as you know, in uh, Australia and New Zealand. And uh, we were gonna be climbing on the Emerald Princess. Now the Emerald Princess had done a cruise to, I believe the South Pacific, Hawaiian Islands, Papet, all those places. It had been on a 28 day cruise where no COVID-19 outbreaks were. So there had been no reports of any COVID-19 on the Emerald Princess or anywhere near where the Emerald Princess just was. <laughs> so when we got up on Friday morning, we heard, I heard uh, one of my friends who was on the ship. We came into port early yesterday evening and we had four people evacuated off of the ship, medically evacuated off of the ship. There were four ambulances apparently that came into the port. And I'm like, what's going on? Well, it was not for coronavirus. It was for, bless their hearts, who knows what was going on. I never did find out what their ailments were. I'm thinking heart attack, stroke, who knows, something like that. 
The demographics on our cruise, Chris and I were just talking about this morning. He just walked into the room, just talked about that this morning. And it was a very, very old, older crowd. We're old now, <laughs> but an older crowd than us, you know. Um, but they were, I, they were rather, rather up there. A lot of walkers, a lot of wheelchairs. A lot of, you know, a, a lot of older folks who, good for them, you know, for getting out and doing their cruise, you know. So Chris and I, you know, of course there was news about the Diamond Princess um, and all of that. And we hadn't heard anything else really about any other cruise ships up to that point other than the Diamond Princess that really got stuck over in, where were they, Yokohama? And, uh, you know, so we... Of course, we're watching the news, and of course, we're watching everything, and made the decision, well, we're going to go ahead and get on this cruise ship. We're going to go ahead and get on, and we're going to go ahead and do this cruise, and we're going to cruise home. We're going to cruise from the west coast to the east coast and go through that Panama Canal full transit. So we decided that morning, you know, we, we, had, we had thought about canceling it, honestly. We had really thought about canceling it. But we decided, nope, we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead, and we're going to trust that we're going to get through this okay, and we're going to do this. So we did. Well, about two days into the cruise, we kind of regretted our decision, but we were there and we went ahead with it. So let me go through the itinerary of this cruise real quick. Uh, this might be a little bit longer of a video for, for those of you who have been used to my 10 minute cruising videos and stuff. This obviously is already 11 minutes long. I might've cut some of it out of it by this point, but this will probably be a longer video just to warn you because I'm going to go ahead and talk about this cruise. Not that we did a lot, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about it all in one video here because uh, I do have a cruise outfit of the week video for this. And I do think I have a, a cruise uh, stateroom tour to edit for this, but I think I'll, I may put them on both channels, but I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing with that yet, but I do have those two others in the can. And so anyway, this was, like I said, a 15 day cruise. And it had a lot of sea days, you guys. Uh, this cruise, as Chris and I had said, or I had said from the very beginning, was for us to rest and recuperate and get used to the time zone changes. Going to Australia is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> for those of you who haven't done it, you know, you end up getting to Australia the day before after oh I don't know it's like 15 hours difference ahead going and then when you come when we came home we got home three hours earlier than it was on the same day in Australia now wrap your brain around that one and no I can't say it again because I'll get messed up <laughs> but anyway the itinerary for this cruise was Los Angeles uh, two sea days just at sea days Puerto Vallarta another sea day I can't pronounce this, never can pronounce this. Hotoco, Mexico. And then Puta Rinas, Mexico. Then at sea. Then uh, Porta Amador, which is really Panama City. Then the Panama Canal Transit, one day, one whole day. Then Cartagena, then two sea days, and then back, and then into Fort Lauderdale. I'm gonna be honest with you, we went off of the ship in Puerto Vallarta very very briefly i'll put up some pictures here I, mean, I have my computer here let me to refresh my memory uh so i don't mess up when we went off and when we didn't we stayed on the ship a good bit and i'll be honest with you the longer the cruise went on the more chris and i kind of hung in our stateroom because the longer the cruise went on the worse the news was getting about coronavirus and we almost instinctively kind of barricaded ourselves, at our, not barricaded, but kind of just stayed in our room. We went out, we would go out to eat for lunch somewhere on the ship, come right back to the room, watch movies, watch off the balcony. We did go off, as I said, a couple of times, but honest to goodness, you guys, this cruise was, it was very, uh, I was very anxious. I was very, very anxious for the entire cruise because, or, well, after about the third day because we heard about the Grand Princess and we heard about other cruise ships and we heard about how quickly the coronavirus uh, was spreading and how contagious it was and not, and it just wasn't in the, in, in Japan. It just, it was all, it was globally that this was happening. And uh, so I was a hot mess. I'll be honest with you. I was a hot mess and nervous. Chris was steady as a rock, steady as she goes. 
That's how Chris is all the time. And uh, if, he's, if he's anxious or nervous, you would never know when to look at him or talk to him. Me, I'm like, what's going to happen? I don't know, you know. And I was a mess. I was a hot mess, I will admit it. And poor Chris, bless his heart, he took good care of me and he helped me get through that. It was scary. I can't lie. It was, it was frightening, you know. Now, I have to say that Pam and her boss, Scott, two, the two of them, you all met Pam in my video, and her bo boss, Scott, uh, both told me in private messages, you know, look, Arlen, we'll get you guys off of that ship. If you guys want to come home early, we'll get you off of there. And we looked at our, our, our itinerary, and, <laughs> and we had... Um, uh, one port coming up that was in uh, where, Chile. And we're like, I don't want to get off in Chile. And the other one was in Colombia. And we're like, no, we don't want to get off in Colombia. So we just said, no, we'll just stick with it. We feel safer on the ship. And because of where the ship had been before our cruise, that made a big difference, I think. And because of where we were cruising and there were no coronavirus uh, uh, anybody sick with coronavirus in any of the ports that we went to except when we tried to get into port uh to uh cartagena and they wouldn't let us dock but it wasn't because we were infected it's because they just closed their ports to all ships so we didn't go to cartagena we just steamed on back to fort lauderdale now uh, I will be showing you pictures as we go here. As I said, the first two days were sea days, were sea days, and I took some pictures around the ship, you know, during these days. And uh, they, the Emerald Princess, for those of you who might be going to be sailing on her, is a lovely ship. She is a sister ship to the Ruby Princess and the Sapphire, I believe. And uh, she's lovely. She's absolutely lovely. Holds, I think, 3,500 passengers and 1,200 crew, something like that. And they uh, have really updated her buffet area, which is where Chris and I ate most of the time. I would say about four days into the crew, they switched. So when coronavirus was really ramping up and everything, they switched to crew service only in the buffet. And they ramped up there. We're going to put, they had sinks before you go into the buffet there. Everybody had to stop at the sinks, which we always did anyway. But you would not be, you would be surprised at the people. No, I'm going to walk right by that sink. I don't have to wash my hands. I'm not dirty. I just wash my hands in my room. No, you didn't touch the rail after you did. You didn't touch the elevator button. You didn't touch this or that or, or come in contact with anything or anybody from your room to the buffet. <sighs> they drive me crazy. They drive me. I told one guy, I, I, I ripped a plate out of a woman's hand. She had taken the plate and uh, started going through it. She went, oh, I just, I changed my mind. I don't want that plate. And the lady in front of me and I went, no, don't do that. You can't do that. And she said, what? I just washed my hands. We're like, yeah, I can't. Anyway, regardless. Uh, but their buffet area is now called the Market, uh, oh, shucks, I don't have my powder over here. Market Fresh. Something like that. I'll, t I'll put it up there so you guys know. And it, it's lovely. And I'm telling you guys, I could have decorated this ship. Honest to goodness. It was very farmhousey. Lovely. It was absolutely lovely. Lots of light grays and beautiful chairs. Nice and comfy chairs and lovely tables. And the buffet signs were beautiful. And it was pristine. And it was clean. And it was lovely. I'm telling you guys, it was lovely. And I'll show you some pictures of it here as we go. I couldn't believe it. I was like, Chris, look. They have lanterns sitting on this, you know, on this shelving unit that was like between the hand washing and the pool. I was like, this is crazy. I've never, I never have seen that kind of decor on a cruise ship. It was really cool. It was really, really cool. So, uh, so we spent most of our time, almost every meal, other than when we had hamburger hot dogs, which was at the grill, at the salty dog grill out on the Lido deck. Uh, we ate most of our meals in the buffet, to be honest. We didn't have one meal in the in the dining room, and not that we didn't, wouldn't have, but they just, their menus, we didn't care for what was on their menus. So we just ate at the buffet. It had a lovely buffet, lovely uh, variety, you know, of food. So, uh, but on those days too, we, we got some laundry done. Uh, they had a, we were on the Dolphin deck in room D5, 28, which is a mini suite, and as again, I'll, I'll put up a, a uh, 
you know, video of that room tour, uh, much like it was just like the room that we, we had on the Ruby, only, you know, a couple things different, but it was basically the same. Lovely balcony. You know, we were on the port side, uh, you know, port and starboard. You know how to tell the difference, right? Port, P-O-R-T, is on the left, L-E-F-T. Both have four letters. Port and left, P-O-R-T, L-E-F-T. Left side of the ship as you're facing forward and starboard right side. We had a, a naturalist on one of our Alaska cruises and we were on, you know, he says, if you go to the starboard right side and look off of the starboard right side and the whale is on the starboard right side, that is ingrained in my head. So I know that the starboard is on the right side of all the ships, you know, as you're standing facing forward. So we were on the port side and uh, went to the laundry room. Laundry room was in the aft on the uh, dolphin deck. On the Carib deck, it was actually toward midship. So be careful when you go on these ships if you want to find your laundromat. I would go to your cr cruise personalizer and check there and check where your laundromat is so you're not trekking up and down the hall looking for it before you get on board and just take a peek at where it is on your deck. Each laundry room has a token machine and a, 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 you know, a machine where you can get your soap or bleach or softeners from. You have to use your cruise card. Uh, this is not a medallion class ship yet. The Ruby was, this one was not. So we went back to our cruise card and uh, you can slide your cruise card or show your medallion either way and get tokens. And the tokens are what either buys your, your detergents and stuff and runs the washers and dryers. So we did, actually Chris did, I'll be honest with you, Chris did most of the laundry. He would get up early in the morning and take it down and have it done before I, while I was getting myself, you know, dressed for the day. Bless his heart. And he gave him something to do and, you know, it was, and he kept us in clean clothes, honest to goodness, he did. Also went around the ship and did shopping. Uh, we are elite now with Princess, which is the highest you can go, uh, and which gave us a 10% off. But on the first day, first, first, first or second, first or first and second day, you get 10% off in all of the Princess shops. So we got kind of 20% off. So I did purchase a few things, one of which is a Brighton purse, and I'll show that to you before the end of the video here. I'll go get it and show it to you. Also bought um, a couple of rings, bought this little purple ring that I've been wearing on my middle finger. Isn't that pretty? And this little pinky ring. It looks like a little, it looks like a little crown, doesn't it? Barbara got a really pretty ring just like this. Only hers has a little bigger stone in the middle. When she was on the ruby, it's really pretty. So I got that and I got this thumb ring. Which I think is really pretty. Let me show it to you closer. There we go. So I got those and my purse, and then I got little Maverick got t-shirts. You know, it had a couple of the ports and stuff. So that's all I bought. I didn't, oh, I did buy my girls some gifts, uh, which I can't really tell you about here. I'll have to tell you about that later, just in case they happen to watch. So, uh, but you know, so we did all our shopping within the first couple of days on that ship, to be honest. So, uh, let's see, what else did we do? Oh, I forgot. I bought myself a really pair of, pretty pair of sunglasses, a Brighton sunglasses, because I had forgotten my sunglasses at Barbara's shop, and we didn't find them. We couldn't find them, couldn't find them. So I had to have a, a pair of sunglasses. So it just so happened they had a really pretty pair of Brighton sunglasses that I got on a really good sale. I was, they were on sale for like, what were, I don't even remember, probably $39, I think. But then I got another 20% off. So for Brighton sunglasses, that was pretty good. So I got those. And I'll show you that stuff here in a little bit. Uh, and we just took some pictures. I'm just showing you pictures here as we go. Took some pictures around the ship. Uh, you know, it, it was it was lovely. Also got a, a, pro, a gift with a gift with the Brighton stuff. Got these lovely tote, tote bags that we've been using for shopping bags since we've been back to town. Uh, so also in the buffet, you also always have self-service. Hot water, water, iced tea, ice and uh you know tea bags and that kind of thing i didn't see any hot chocolate just for to tell you guys sometimes i get that question do you see hot chocolate like packets in the buffet i did not on either ship on either the ruby or the or the emerald i didn't see hot chocolate packets now chris got me uh he got the coffee card it's not a card anymore it's a package and he got me a couple of hot chocolates from the international cafe which they do have on both the ruby and the emerald by the way so anyway, uh, that's what we did the first couple of days. Kind of shopped, hung out, rested, tried to recuperate. We lost. <laughs> I 
actually gained, I guess, I don't know how you say that, but we had to turn our clocks forward the very first night and then the second night, bang, bang, right away. <laughs> we were, and of course, you know, we were three hours, there was a three hour difference between the East Coast and the West Coast, and we had time change. So we also, we had to go forward four hours. And we had already, uh, I was so messed up, you guys, as far as sleep was concerned, and, and you know, I didn't know what end was up. I didn't know what time it was when, I'm telling you. But anyway, here, you know, I'm showing pictures of the shops and this little gentleman, he helped me. His name was Anish. He helped me uh, when I was in the uh, Calypso Cove. What a nice gentleman. The crew members on these ships, both of the ships, were absolutely phenomenal. These two little girls, where do I have the picture? Two little girls that helped me with my Brighton purse. They were sweet as the day is long. They are they're sweet as the day is long, and I'll show you pictures of them. What dolls. And girls, I hope you're watching. And Anisha, I hope you're watching. And I'm going to show you a couple pictures of the two gentlemen I met up in the, uh, that always waited on us. Up in the uh, buffet, oh, one was Yevgeny. And the other one, Janish, I think his name was, something like that. So what kind people. And then our uh, stateroom steward, Leo. <laughs> he was always so happy. I don't care. It could have been Armageddon, which we almost felt like it was, <laughs> around us on that ship. Uh, you know, he was always happy, always had a smile. And he told me I was really clean. He so told me I, we were his cleanest <laughs> cleanest passengers, which doesn't surprise me because I'm a clean freak, you know, and we're both very organized and I have to have everything just so and everything in its place. So anyway, so that's what we did the first two days. You know, we just rested and re started to try to recover uh, from it. Okay, so our first port of call was Puerto Vallarta and uh, it was a lovely port, hotter than all get out though, y'all. I mean, tell you, these ports in Mexico were just hotter than the hinges. What can I tell you? It was really super hot. Chris got off and uh, we both got off at this port for a little while and we walked around the port just a little bit, just real close to the port. Uh, got a little Maverick, a, a, a t-shirt and myself a t-shirt and we didn't go far. We didn't wander far and there really wasn't much to do. We weren't really interested in tequila or in that kind of thing or this wasn't the coffee one, was it Chris? No. Uh, but uh, it was a nice town, it was a nice stop, but what the highlight of that day was when we were pulling away from port, the captain had said, he came on and he goes, all right, you guys, he said, we saw, he was British, I love listening to him, but he, they said they saw a pot of whales when they were coming in that morning and he saw a breaching whale when we were coming into port that morning. He said, maybe they'll still be out there. Well, Chris and I were like, well, we're there looking for whales, let me tell you one thing. So lo and behold, as we got mm, two or three, four, five miles away from port, here come, we saw the blows, we know what to look for, you know, we've been in Alaska, you know, a million times. So we saw the humpback blows, and I said, and Chris, Chris actually saw them before I did, and he got out his long lens, and we got some pictures of some whales breaching. One fellow was really putting on a show, and, uh, Chris really got some great shots. I'll put up here in picture in picture over my face here so you can really see them. Uh, what an entertaining evening. I, I was telling Chris when we, every evening I loved pulling away from the ports. That was my favorite part of the cruise. I don't know why, but I just, for some reason it calms me. I like it. I, it makes me feel better to just stand out there and feel the breeze in my face and watch the world go by like that. It's just calming for me to watch the water, you know, and everything. But that was the most fun for me that day was pulling away from port and seeing those, seeing those whales put on a show like that. It was absolutely wonderful. It was absolutely wonderful. So the very next day was another sea day. Here are Again. a couple other little girls that were standing. They always had sales on sea days, you know, the little couple of girls who were standing there selling uh, I can't remember whether this was rings or what they were selling here, jewelry of some sort, you know. Anna Marie, I kept seeing her everywhere. Bless her heart, there's the rings. And the, the rope, you know, the rope bracelets or whatever you could get them to make. Chains by the foot or whatever they do. Uh, so... The Hi everyone, Orlin here. Can you see me in the reflection of the of the window here? <laughs> there we go. 
Uh, we are in port today. You can see kind of behind me that it is an interesting looking port. This is, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, so I'm going to show it to you. This is the port here. It's Thursday, March the 5th, 2020. We're on the Emerald Princess, and tonight's dress is smart casual. Anyway, let me turn around here, and here we are on our balcony. You can see this. First, they washed it off today, I think. And it is an open balcony, by the way. Uh, we haven't had a lick of rain, so it hasn't worried us a bit. But here we are at this port. You can see these two big, I don't know what these are, some kind of dredging or drilling. We're thinking they might keep this harbor dredged out, actually. And we think that might be what these ships are made to do. That's the Magdalena there. Where we are here on our Panama, ocean to ocean Panama Canal cruise. Working our way back to Fort Lauderdale and then back to Virginia. Alrighty. I'll tell you what I did see at this one was this gorgeous statue of Jesus. Would you look at this thing? Oh my heavens, you could, we, I could look at it all day long from the ship. And uh, we had our long lens out and we took a big picture of it like that. Uh, I had a friend tell me that she actually hiked up to it. There's a, you could see almost the hiking trail that went kind of went, you know, up the mountain, kind of in a, kind of in a swirl like that. It went up, it was lovely, absolutely lovely. And we really, really, really enjoyed looking at that all day, it was beautiful. But what I, <laughs> I practiced with the long lens camera off of the balcony that day and I took a bunch of pictures of pelicans. I love pelicans, you guys. Pelicans are the coolest looking bird and buddy, they would get down and they'd, they'd stand there and they'd look down into the water and you could see them scan in the water and then their wings would kind of fluff up and Boy, they took a dive bomb right down into the right down into the water and caught their fish and brought it up in their gullet. And here are some pictures that I caught. I took all of these pictures. Yes, I did. I took all of these pictures. <laughs> and they were so much fun to watch. And I was really proud of myself that I was able to catch all of those pictures, you know. Uh, but I love them. I love those pelicans at that at that port anyway so um, anyway so that's the highlight of my day was was taking the pictures of those pelicans let me tell you something so the next day we were at sea and as i tell you i'm zipping right through this 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 uh this itinerary honest to goodness I, you know we did a lot of resting and relaxation you know and relaxing so the next port we were in port arm Puerto Armador, which is sits right beside the Panama Canal. You can sit there and you can look and see where the Pan Panama Canal started. It was, it's very neat and a beautiful cityscape. And Chris and I did get off and we walked around town a little bit. And um, we had to have our temperatures taken. This was the first day that the coronavirus really kind of affected us. The uh, captain came on. The, over the PA that morning, and he says, well, it was really early that morning. Well, it was five o'clock, actually, in the morning, and we're all like, I was awake, and Chris was already up and walking, and he comes on, and he goes, well, we've been delayed a little while getting into port here. He said, I'm not sure we're going to get, you know, clearance. He said, I'm assuring them that we have nobody on board that has coronavirus, but, uh, Panama has put in some, you know, some stringent um, medical screenings, you know, that you, that if you get off the ship today, you will have to have your temperatures taken and so on. And it was a tender port. So you have to, you know, get onto one of their tender boats, one of their little lifeboats, and they, and they zip you on into shore. So Chris and I said, all right, we're not sick. We're going to, we're going to, you know, we're going to go off. And so here are a couple of pictures and I blurred out their faces. I don't know who these people are and I don't, I don't need them seeing them on my video and get mad at me or anything. So, uh, but we definitely had our temperatures checked when we went off. Every passenger did when they went off the ship before they were allowed on, you know, on shore. So that was different that was very different and a little bit scary and uh at that point they hadn't had any cases in panama at that time and you know we got off and we walked around and came right back on to be honest with you and um 
you know, it was it was a nice little town from what we could see, but all I got was, do you want to take a taxi ride? I'll take you. I have the best taxi driver in Panama. I'll take you for a taxi ride. I'll take you here. I'll take you there. I'll take you here. Want to go see how Starbucks coffee is made? Well, y'all know how I love coffee. I said, no, I'm good. I don't need to see how coffee's made. Thank you. Here we are on our tender ride back from Panama City. And uh, just thought y'all might like to take a quick look at the Emerald Princess from this vantage point. <laughs> we're on a tender, the Princess Tender, and we're sitting on the top. I'm showing you pictures you know as we go through here a beautiful sunset that evening uh absolutely beautiful so all we did was kind of tootle out into the ocean about 140 miles we took about 140 miles circle uh after we left port and got ourselves in our queue the next morning to go through the panama canal now we went through the new locks of the panama canal the emerald princess is a larger ship that will not fit through the old locks. Princess does have a few ships that does that do fit through the old locks, Coral and Island being two of them. Uh, the Emerald is too big to fit, so we went through the new locks, and it was a lovely experience. And one I'm glad we really glad we did, and one that Chris really enjoyed because you know he's an engineer, and he loved seeing it all work. It had two sets of locks. Each lock, each set set of locks had like three tiers. You'd pull in and then they'd shut doors behind you and then they'd fill it up and then they'd open the gate up this way and you'd pull into the next tier and they shut the gate behind you, fill it up, lift you, lift you up. We were going from west to east, this opposite direction, obviously coming the other direction and it was lovely and I've got some pictures here that I'll show you of the locks. I'll also show you some pictures of the old locks that we could see from the starboard side going from west to east, it would be on your port side if you were going east to west. So it was a really good experience. Uh, and we, we really had a good time. We really had a good time that day. It was really hot and people were not very uh, pleasant as far as giving up a space <laughs> on the deck. But you know what? It was okay. It was good. We had a lovely time. Uh, it was very interesting. Uh, I don't know that I jumped to do it again. I, I'm glad I can say I've seen, been through a full transit of the Panama Canal. Uh, it was an engineering marvel, for sure. I think the other uh, locks are, are UNESCO World Heritage Site, which is really cool, the old locks. You know, so it was lovely. It was lovely. It was a lovely, lovely, lovely day. Uh, but anyway, uh, to finish up this, this cruise, the next day was a, uh, we were supposed to go into Cartagena. And as I said, they would not allow us to dock in Cartagena, not because of our ship, not because our ship was infected with coronavirus, but just because they had put in stringent rules that they weren't allowing, they closed their ports. They weren't allowing any cruise ships in. So we just started to cruise home. But I'll be honest with you, when they denied us entry, that got my mind, you know, a whirl going, oh my land, what does this mean for Fort Lauderdale? Are they going to let us into Fort Lauderdale? We'd heard other ships that weren't be able to, that weren't able to get in to some ports, not Fort Lauderdale, but to some other ports. We heard that people, you know, were coming up with coronavirus on other ships, not just princess ships, but other ships, you know, and you know, every day we prayed that we wouldn't hear of somebody coming down with coronavirus or being, you know, had to take, we had test kits apparently on board just in case we needed them, but we never had to use them. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. And two days later, we, we pulled right in to Fort Lauderdale. But those two days at sea, the Cartagena day when we were supposed to go to Cartagena and the two sea days, the two subsequent sea days were so anxiety ridden for me. You guys, I, I, you know, I have to tell you, I wasn't worried about getting the virus. I was worried about getting stuck. Uh, and, you know, and not that we have anything that would, you know, that we had to, we didn't have to get back to jobs, thank the Lord. We didn't have to get back to anything pressing here. But it's just the thought, we'd been traveling for six weeks and it's just the thought of, you know, being put on a military base somewhere or something like that, you know, or who knows where they would, 
you know, quarantine us for 14 days. We were so grateful when we, we were pulling into Fort Lauderdale, we, everybody was up early that morning. No, we had no announcements. They had picked up our luggage the night before, just like they always do, uh, to ready it for the transfers, you know, off of the ship. So our, when our luggage got taken the night before, we felt pretty good <laughs> that we were gonna be able to, to pull on into Fort Lauderdale. But that morning we were all up and watching and we, we pulled right into Fort Lauderdale and we docked. And we were so grateful. We were so, 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 so grateful. But then we had to be at our disembarkation lounge by a certain time. So we got there by the certain time and we were delayed an hour. And they kept saying, well, we're still waiting for the, you know, the, the local authorities to give clearance to start the disembarkation process. And we're all sitting there going, what does that mean? Does that mean we're going to get off of the ship? Or does that mean we're gonna be quarantined somewhere? What does that mean? Are they gonna let us off? It was just the chatter, the chitter, the chatter all over our lounge and I'm sure around the ship was just at a, at a heightened peak and we were so worried. I wanna back up for a minute and say, we had a hard time getting on this ship because they had a, a, an IT problem. Uh, we were delayed hours and hours getting on the ship in Los Angeles. And so that was stressful. And so, but when we first, at the beginning of the cruise, I will say that, that we had a grumpy, a grumpy uh, passengers, a lot of grumpy passengers uh, complaining, about, complaining that. about that and complain. I, I'm sorry, you guys, I'm having a little allergies. We're having, our crab trees are, are blooming and our... <laughs> Our Bradford pears are blooming, and I'm just like, wow, this is not the coronavirus, I swear. Oh, my Lord. Uh, but uh, but when we got back into town, it's like, bang, you know, you're back into the throes of spring here. Anyway, uh, but as we went through the cruise, those grumpy goobers kind of realized that there's a lot more important things to worry about in this world than you know, us having to sit a couple of hours waiting to get on a cruise ship that we were all so fortunate to be able to take. You know, I, 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 I was almost a palpable feeling of, you know, wow, we are grateful to be here. And while we're worried, will we be able to get back off? And, you know, all that, that petty kind of yuckiness at the very beginning of the cruise, I saw switch over to, an, we, we, it was an anxious crowd. I will say that. Uh, not anybody who did anything bad or anything. It was just, you know, it was the conversation in the elevator. Well, hopefully we'll get off in, you know, Fort Lauderdale. And, well, hopefully, you know, all will go well. And all went well. And that crew, the captain, the officers, the crew on the Emerald Princess were amazing throughout the entire cruise, you guys. Throughout the entire cruise. We were so impressed. We were so impressed. They never lost their smiles. Uh, I heard the last day, there were a couple days that they didn't know where they were going to be going. They weren't told where they were going to be going. And I spoke to an officer the last day we were on board. And apparently uh, when the Emerald pulled away from port after we were disembarked, they went over to their private island, Princess K, and they dropped the crew off for two weeks of R&R. &R. And, you know, in the middle of all this, of course, we heard that Princess was going to be taking a 60-day pause because of the coronavirus. And so we knew that it wasn't going to be re-embarking passengers. And we felt really lucky to get off, really blessed to get off. We, uh, but anyway, back to the crew. I'll get back to disembarkation in a minute. But the crew, we were so happy that they were going to be going to the private island. They so deserve the R&R. &R not just physically, because they'd been working harder. They'd been, you know, sanitizing everything and every everything and that they saw and could touch. They were sanitizing even more. They always keep a clean ship, Princess does. But, you know, they were even adhering to higher protocol. And uh, so I was happy that they were going to be able to have some R&R. &R. And I don't know what happened. I heard that some would be send, being sent back to their their countries if they were not going to be, you know, needed uh, to do whatever they were going to be doing on the ships for the 60-day pause. And Lord willing, they'll come back after 60 days. Lord willing, this virus will dissipate and calm down. 
you know, we just don't know. It's every day, every day, every day. It's something else, something new, something worse. You know, so hopefully by the time you see this, it will have gotten better and better and better. You know, I hope. But Chris and I uh, disembarked the ship. We got on, thank goodness we had global entry. We did have global entry because you went through, uh, Border Patrol was right there at the cruise port. And we got in the global entry line and it was quite the line. Princess was not, uh, the, the, our, had a hard time finding our suitcases. It was in the red, uh, you know, they do red one, red two, silver one, silver two, aqua one, aqua two. You have uh, luggage tags that they put on. We were red two and we had a terrible time finding our luggage. We had four pieces of luggage. So we did finally find them and then we went and got into the global entry line and looked back and it was a huge line. So I am sure there were people in line there for hours and hours trying to get out of the cruise port. But we managed to get out of there because we had global entry. I encourage you to, to bite the bullet, pay the little bit of money it costs for those who, who travel internationally, you guys, and get global entry, whatever we're allowed to travel internationally. Again, that is, of course. Uh, but to go ahead and bite the bullet and go for your interview, get your fingerprints taken, and do global entry. Uh, it really makes a difference when you're coming back in from being, you know, out of the country. Got on a bus, the transfer bus took us right to Fort Lauderdale. We went through security really quick. No temperature checks anywhere coming off the ship or coming into the airport or anything, which I was kind of surprised. But we didn't have a temperature. We weren't sick. But, you know, still, I would have kind of liked to have seen that, to be honest with you. Got on our JetBlue flight, uh, though, at 1 o'clock, and we're back here in Virginia at 3.30ish. Uh, picked up our rental car because we had, as you know, to take a rental car to the airport. Picked up another one to come home. And we're here about 5.30, 6 o'clock. And it was so good to walk back in this house, you guys. <laughs> I was so relieved, you know, to walk back in here and know that I was home and know that I didn't have any worries of whether I was going to be able to get home, you know, Again, it was an anxious, anxious time. That's not to say that we will never cruise again because we already have a bunch of cruises in our queue. And we will, once the industry gets up and running again, we will absolutely cruise and we will absolutely cruise with Princess. Hands down, we love Princess and we will cruise with them and we think they got dealt a bad hand, to be honest with you. Uh, part of the reason is because they do report everything, not that others don't, I'm not saying that, but... You know, they were very, they're very stringent about reporting, you know, all of their cases or whatever. And the poor Diamond Princess just happened to be in that area of the world, you know. So, anyway, regardless of all that, that is my cruise report. And that is what happened to us when we were on the Emerald Princess. Again, the crew was wonderful. The, 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 uh, the captain was wonderful. He really kept us upbeat. He was always positive. The only time that I heard him, I could hear a little growl in his voice was when we got turned away from Cartagena. And he was like, you gotta be kidding me. We do not have anybody sick on this ship. There's no reason why we can't, other than the, you know, the local government there. So anyway, so that's it. So let me go get my purse for you. Let me show you that. Here we go. It is a Brighton purse, isn't that pretty? And it's big, you know, look at it. It's kind of big. Uh, and it's got a pocket, a front pocket here, and then it's got another slip pocket in the back. And it came with this heart on it. This is, I had this on another purse here. But it came with this heart. And uh, it has like a, a I should put you down, like a snap. Like this is, this is a magnet here, but it also has a snap kind of to hold it in like the bucket to hold it look to make it look like a bucket purse kind of you know and then it has a magnet closure so that is my new brighton purse i love it it's so pretty and then and then my spiffy diffy brighton sunglasses check them out Ta -da! aren't they pretty oh my goodness and they were not expensive you guys and they are heavy and nice and lovely they have a little jewel on the side look at that isn't that pretty? Black on the front, but then white on the sides with a little jewel on either side. So pretty. Love them. And they came in this really pretty case, a pretty metal case. 
And the only other thing I bought was, like I said, t-shirts. We both got t-shirts and got little Maverick t-shirts and we got each girl a nice gift, you know. So that was it. We didn't buy a lot, you know, on board. But, oh, I did buy a couple tops that you'll probably see. I'm sorry, I forgot about those. That you'll probably see in upcoming videos or whatever. Or maybe I'll put a picture here of one that I wore. So you'll see that also in the uh, cruise outfit video. Anyway, I think that's it. That's it for this one. So we do have another cruise coming up uh, at the end of the summer and the fall. I'm not sure. Everything's kind of in flux right now. I'm not sure exactly what we're doing, but stick with me over there, you know. Uh, in my country craft corner, you know, I, I'll get back to decorating, I'm sure, and crafting eventually. Uh, but I'm not, I don't have big plans to do spring, you know, a big spring switch out or a big Easter switch out. We're getting closer to Easter. Uh, I may do my mailbox and my front porch. And I do have a little project. I'm going to make a embroidery hoop and lamb's ear little uh, wreaths for Candace's or for little Maverick's nursery uh really easy peasy project so i may do that coming up pretty quick here other than that i don't i don't know what i have in the queue but we'll figure it out and we'll just i'll just bring you whatever i'm doing in my life like i have been doing so thank you again for sticking with me throughout the blue and white decor i know a lot of those were in the can videos that i had made before i even left town and then thank you so much on my country craft corner for sticking with me with my cruise videos too i appreciate you uh, branching out with me and looking at something a little bit different than just uh, my home and decorating and you know my crafting so thank you so much for sticking with me so with all that said uh, let me just say a word here about COVID-19 uh, you know I you know I hope that none of you are being affected by COVID-19 uh, I hope that uh, if you know somebody that you're able to help them in some way, take them a meal or, you know, take them a crossword puzzle book and drop it at their porch or, you know, whatever. Do something kind. Do a kindness for somebody who may be being affected by the COVID-19 virus. We all are being affected. Chris and I are self-quarantining for two weeks. By the time you see this, we'll have a week to go. Uh, but we are self-quarantining for two weeks, not because of our ship, but because we did walk through an airport and because we did uh, get on a plane, you know. So we are, you know, uh, practicing uh, social distancing for sure. Uh, of course, we have to go into grocery stores and things like that. Uh, but, uh, Again, we're not sick. Don't feel sick. Don't feel any different, you know. But uh, please take care of yourselves and your neighbors and your loved ones and call your parents or call your kids, call your relatives, call your friends, you know, and uh, keep in touch, keep close that way. You know, social distancing is one thing, but we need to keep everybody close to us, you know, keep close because this is, when you're isolated like this, it's really easy to feel isolated, to feel like you're farther apart from your family. To, you know, the last thing I wanted to do was come home and, and have to be away from my children. I haven't seen them in, you know, almost two months now. With Candace being pregnant, they got a new puppy. By the way, little Pearl, let me put little Pearl up here and show you little Pearl. <laughs> little Italian greyhound, little playmate for V, Valentino. And Candace is our daughter who's due with Maverick James in the end of June. You know, Lord willing, all this will be gone by then. And, you know... It's affecting all of our lives. So just hang in there, you guys. Hang in there. We'll get through this. We'll get through it together. This too shall pass. This honest to goodness too shall pass. Keep looking up. Keep having faith. With all of that said, I hope that those of you who may be struggling or suffering with a catastrophic illness, chronic pain, or COVID-19, I hope that you have someone there with you taking care of you, helping you get through each day, making the very, very best out of each day. I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or from where it should be. I love y'all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around, and I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And with all that said, I'll just say, until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.